Sometimes all you need is that one chance. We've been a band for 12 years, grinding away at the southern part of Africa. And we got that opportunity. And this is our journey. We have killed something that was great A big is lost for our own mistakes We fully we commit to what we have planned Cause changing the world is a well-being Wait, do you mean welcome? The Leap Line Group! Yeah, we're heading in Germany, Hamburg We're currently in Joburg, Art Hamburg International And uh, yeah, we're preparing our flight for Durban Five Durban. minutes Durban, Dubai. Dubai, <laughs> Dubai, Dubai. No. So you're in Dubai. So we weren't entirely sure if we were even going to enter this battle because we were still in the process of getting on board with Regan as our new vocalist. We only had Regan join the band about three, four months prior to us entering into the battle and doing the first run. So replacing someone like Brian was pretty intense but he's been amazing like you, we couldn't have chosen a better person to front this band and to be like a brother of this band so we, we took a chance and we entered leading up to buck and just the amount of hard work they went and see booking shows playing gig after gig after gig like i think that was one of the most active two months of facing the gallows and won the first round and then we drew the second slot in the final when our name was actually finally called out. It was like this outburst of every emotion that we've been experiencing for the last two months. Are we going to do it? Are we going to make it? This was the first time that we actually toured overseas and we were super excited. I mean, like, this, is, this was a dream come true for us. It's something that we've been working towards since day one. This is something we've sacrificed our lives for, is to be able to step on a plane and perform on an international stage in a different country to people who have never heard or seen us before. Yeah, that was it. Well, on the plane, leaving South Africa. Sitting in that plane and like looking to the right and to the left, there's like my gallows dudes, and we're on our way to one of the best experiences we ever had. And at that point, we didn't know what to expect. So we just landed at the Dubai airport. We're gonna lay it over for like eight hours. <laughs> So we're going to be hanging out, living the cheap life, looking for the good food, looking for some good cafe. Cafe! And uh, <laughs> yeah, then we're off to Hamburg and fucking, fucking, here we come. Yeah. Gotta keep comfy, kids. What's up, Jess? No, I don't, we don't need to talk to each other, we just, we can just... So we're sitting in Dubai right now, lying. This is the first time we've actually been comfortable the whole trip. We're chilling, getting ready to go to the German band. Nap time. Nap time. I'm gonna rip it. See you later. Well, I'm just gonna dream about playing my show. Next thing you know, fast forward. Voila, I'm there. The boys made it to Hamburg City. Just drop it all the bags. I just smell pastries, dude. Just smell the pastries. Pops. Yeah. Pew, pew, pew. First time in Europe for some of us. I think that's where it already started sinking in. One time, motherfucking Shushan, we just arrived in Hamburg. Ah! Sorry. This is uh, a big game. Yeah, this way. Fucking Hamburg! We have a good short walk. <laughs> a, good <laughs> short, a good 300 meter walk with yeah. all our gear to our backpackers. I just remember we had all our luggage and we didn't know how to get to the hostel. Just walking along with the most freaking gear we could have had. We 
made it to a hostel. Fucking made it. It's just more of a hotel, really. It's like, it's a very... Does anyone have a Swiss Army knife? Because mine got jacked with the border control. You're lucky you didn't go to jail, bro. Bro, I've been there. It's okay. <laughs> So we had a day or two before we left for Wacken in Hamburg, so we, we made the most of it. We just started missioning and checking out the city and it's one thing that's amazing about Europe especially is that you can walk everywhere. We found some souls! I got a feeling. Every place that you walked into had a fridge that had beer, water, and Coca-Cola, and the beer was cheaper than everything. Be sick. We're on tour. <laughs> we kept on getting what we called Lucy's, loose beers. Some Lucy Goosey. We got some Lucy Goosey's, yeah. And yeah, we just drank the whole day, just missioning around, hanging out. It's very different being in a, in a place where you have that much freedom to roam and just being able to explore like that was just next level. It's a bit difficult. I don't have the equip tools. We got these dogs. Awesome. Just behave yourself. It's raining, but it's Russia. <laughs> Shots for the boys, eh? Uh, I feel really good. I feel like I just had two schnitzels and some cheese sauce. <laughs> but it's definitely inside of me. Was I not just reading that, my dude? Bro, <laughs> read what I want. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Sorry, man. So sorry. Come on, man, please. Sorry, dude. Sweets is a nut treat like Tropicana. When I have a hammerhead, spits like banana. for Wacken from our backpackers in, in Hamburg. We were joined by Pat, who is one of the judges from South Africa, and he represented us with the other judges at Wacken. It was just really cool seeing a South African face that we know. Yeah, it was like a little bit of home joining us on this adventure. Yeah, he's a champ. I mean, Pat's, Pat's been in the scene for many, many years, and he's done great things for the scene too. So it was only fitting that we had him as a rep for do you even English? We're about to fucking go. We're about to fucking go. Team SA was together to take on Team Germany and the rest of the world, Team World. And we jumped in this van and took a road trip down to the, the little village of Wacken. As you're driving, you just see W O A on the windows of all these cars that are all heading to the promised land. The intense feeling that we're about to rock up to the biggest metal festival in the world, the Mecca. Finally, we arrived at Bucken. Over 
over 100,000 people, if I'm not mistaken, and it was amazing to be surrounded by so many like-headed metalheads. So we got settled in, set up a camp quick, and we missioned off. I just remember just walking through these hedgerows, um, and then we go into like the main camping area of Vakken, and all you can hear is just metal being blasted from every single corner of this campsite, like the campsites. <laughs> and just hearing that much good music and just feeling so at home and as we're walking like every person that we went past offered us beers drinks hugs just happiness it was just like the most amazing thing like just being in that little section we haven't even touched the festival yet and already we're having like the best time and literally making friends as we go along. Took advantage of like our whole missions with like little flyers to sh tell people to come to our gig. And um, everyone was super cool. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Yeah, we're hustling here, man. It blew my mind that like this festival has this market this place is like a little macro within the festival. Everything that you could possibly need, shampoo, conditioner, a mattress and tent, camping gear, fruits and veg, Nutella, all the snacks you've ever wanted, bakery, Philadelphia, some good old Nutella, beer, booze, just everything that you need to have a good time at this festival and it's like in the middle of a field. Metal! Schmetal! Where do you come from? South Africa. What? South Africa. Really? Yeah. How insane. This is just for fucking merch. Means it. Brian already purchased his tickets way before we entered into the competition. Um, so to have him and his dad and us all at the festival at the same time, like he couldn't have written it any better. I told you we were making it. Hey, you just fucking chill here. We got tequila. Your mom's got tequila. Uh, we made some some friends along the way, Mark and his crew, um, and uh, they taught us a very strange drinking game, which I'm still recovering from. We are playing games, bro. I'm playing some game that I don't even know what's going on. I don't understand how we're winning. All right. I just played the most fucking stupidest game. Somehow, in Germany, the idea is to get fucked. In South Africa, the idea is to get the other team fucked. <laughs> I won. I won and I feel like this. Man's not fucking hot, dude. Or vamp vampirism, if, if that's even a word. Like, what you want to meet the masses, you want to fucking bite them and turn them into vampires. We're trying to get friends. Like, it's like. I've got to experience. Festival, within a festival, within a festival. Some fucking festival inception going on. It was so cool to be around people that just could not give more of a shit than just to have a good time. The best way I can put it is go to Vakken. <laughs> You're missing out if you haven't been there yet. Mud plugs there, dude. Mud plugs. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was actually nice to see 
something in real life that I've only seen in videos and on YouTube. We're at the stage that we're about to perform on, on Thursday. We just came to browse around. Fucking look at this thing. And what we found out is this is the same stage that the first ever fucking show was played on. It's a 30 year anniversary this year, and we get to duel on the same stage that was ever at Vakken. It's show day! We just kept on getting all these messages and voice notes and videos from everybody back home and the amount of love from our family, our friends, our fans, it was just unreal. We knew we had to do one thing and that was just make South Africa proud. We were given the slots of playing at midday on the Thursday of Fakken. So we basically opened that stage on that day and we were blown away by just how packed that tent got for the first band of the day. took I think one or two songs just to get people loose and then all hell broke loose. We had a pit going, we had guys jumping, we had horns being thrown right across the tent. There were SA flags flying, there were people yelling, there were horns up like in the whole time. And the reaction and the response that we got was it was amazing. It was surreal to be honest. We have traveled a long way to come and party with you guys because we heard the Germans have got the best beer, so we had to go taste it ourselves. We're all the way from South Africa. We are facing the gallows. Thank you so much for having us here today. It's a fucking blessing to be standing with all of you men in one place. It's fucking nuts. Give yourselves a round of applause for pumping up. Good fucking jaw seeing people from all over the country just losing their shit to the crazy shit we were doing. Getting off that stage, 
caked in sweat, dripping, and you're standing there just kind of wondering what just happened. We ended up placing eighth at the main battle at Wacken, which comprised of 30 bands from all over the world. All we wanted to do was just show everybody that we were trying our best and representing as hard as we could. We wanted to pave a path for other bands from SA to be able to do the same opportunities or get noticed and hope we accomplished that because the most important thing for us is driving SA metal and reaching as many people who are willing to listen to it. So what happens when you eat all the food? So finally being done with our show, promoting and punting our gig and handing out flyers and the work side of things, we ha had our chance now to just let loose and watch some killer bands. <laughs>
Last day experiencing Rockham, Parkway drives up. So we're all watching Parkway drive. I decided to film myself crowd surfing and it was the craziest experience. Getting thrown up on this crowd and seeing the size of that crowd and the size of that stage and Parkway just tearing it up and yeah, that was like the last thing I did at Parkway. And uh, didn't get to stick it out for the whole set because we had to make sure to leave for the next city, which was Aachen. We leave Aachen, two o'clock in the morning, make our mission to the airport, thinking that when we get there, we'll be able to get our van and then cruise. But when we got there, we realized that the van place isn't open till eight o'clock in the morning the next day. And Hamburg, doesn't do nighttime flights or anything and close the airport that entire time. And <laughs> we had no place to go because we couldn't find accommodation. Nothing, everything was booked up or way too expensive. So we decided we'll sleep outside the airport like clowns. And that's where we spent the night. We actually just camped out outside the airports on the pavement, basically. Finally, when the airport opened up, got our van and then we're on our way to Aachen, which was a six hour drive. Beautiful drive, and yeah, we're on our way to our first show with Ginger. Okay, and we got a pilot over here, Pilot Abraham, Abraham. and he's just doing his thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's been hours of this nonsense. Check out the water fountain. So beautiful. So after yeah, that six hour drive and practically no sleep, we finally get to Aachen, which is a super cool town. For me, rock up to the venue, which was the music bunker, and it was like a proper World War II bunker. <laughs> Abraham? Yes, the same. We get there, set up a merch table, we have a little sound check. We had like this incredible sound check, it was amazing. And before long, the entire place is packed. It was a sold out show. And 20 minutes after we went to the stage, I open up the show and something's wrong. James's amp packs out. Like it just fucks out. And my guitar just sounds like bacon and eggs cooking in a frying pan. <laughs> One of the tubes went and there was no backup amp and I didn't know what to do. And I'd like try to make a plan and just it sounded horrible. So I actually I didn't actually play the show. I think I played three songs before I walked off the stage and had to sit it out and watched from the side as my band try to recover from me not being there. And it was like the worst feeling, like yeah, good thing we didn't get any footage of it.
we hung out with Ginger and as people they are phenomenal and really down to earth. It was really cool for them to give us this opportunity to open up for them. Yeah, they accepted us into their crew for the two shows that we played with them. Here's the lads on tour. <laughs> and then we wake up the next day and actually look at where we are and it turns out that we were in the Netherlands, seven minutes away from our show in Germany. Yeah, but that, that fucking blew my mind. Not a bad life. Not a bad life. The fans are bricky, boys. Bricky for all these boys. Pretty funny, pretty dumb. We had another six hour drive to Jena. I loved every second of driving on those highways and the autobahn and stuff just to get to see the country that they were very cool. like one of my favorite cities that, that we got to see. We mission through this town, picking up Lucy's and just exploring this amazing town, which the best way to describe it is like the Stellenbosch of Germany. When we were in Jena, the night before our show, we actually had to sit down and openly and freely discuss how the Aachen gig affected us. Like our confidence definitely took a massive knock. It was quite an embarrassing experience. And it ended up that we were standing on this corner of the street at four o'clock in the morning. It was definitely a defining moment where our vision and our direction just all collided and connected on the same path. So the Yenna show, the venue was packed from top to bottom, like a huge highlight of, of the entire tour. The bar that we played in was literally like 500 meters walk from the hostel thing that we were staying in. The venue was unbelievable, like had a proper stage. It was like, like, like a mini hall kind of set up and it had this big balcony and it would like went around the whole building. everyone we played to. Shout out to, to Lucas and his friends for coming out and being so friendly and like, you know, very, very cool people. They even brought like these weird vegetable things that they would fucking wave <laughs> from the crowd. It was, yeah, something I've never, <laughs> I've never fucking seen before, but they were stoked. Considering like how much traveling we did and how exhausted we were, like we still put on like a killer show and 
I remember getting off the stage and our merch table just got mobbed. We just had people coming up to us, asking us questions, buying merch, CDs, T-shirts. Yeah, we even signed some albums and stuff. Playing that show and just the way it went and everything that happened that day and it was just the perfect way to end off the whole tour. We want to thank the South African judges and crew that put the battle together. Shout out to Pat Carlos and Sash actually heading it up. I hope that this is something that continues to happen on a yearly basis because this is exactly what the scene needs. It needs that kind of international exposure. We came back as a, a different band. We're much more focused and much more driven and we're ready to just keep this momentum going and push further and further. Oh,